Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today we're continuing our Christmas series entitled, Tis the Season. And this is our second message in that series. And this message is called, Our Christmas Mandate. Turn with me, please, to our scripture, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the very first Christmas. The long-awaited promise has finally come. The prophecy has been finally fulfilled. Joy should now fill every heart. A song should fill every mouth. For the Lord is come. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come, let us celebrate his coming. For he comes to seek and to save that which was lost. Praise the Lord. Our text said that in the same country, that would be Bethlehem, shepherds were working late that night, keeping watch over their flock of sheep. When suddenly an angel appeared to them, which, and rightly so, terrified them, and the angel proclaimed the greatest news ever. He said in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 through 12, Fear not! For behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, for every single soul in the world. For on, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The angel was in fact telling the shepherds, you need to go to Bethlehem. You need to see this thing that I just told you about. This is the great event. This is what you have been waiting for your entire lives. Your parents before you were waiting, and their parents before them, and their parents, and their parents. Israel was waiting for their Messiah. So in other words, the angel was telling these shepherds, come and see. And that, my friends, is our, our Christmas mandate. Come and see. Go and tell. Did you know that according to Barna Group statistics, more than half of Christians do not know or cannot recognize the Great Commission? It is our Christmas mandate, and more than half of the Christians do not even know that it exists, or they cannot recognize it. Maybe that is the reason why more and more Christians are falling down on their God-given responsibility of go and tell. They simply don't know about it, 
or is under the impression that it is not their personal responsibility. It seems like spiritual conversations are being or are becoming rarer and rarer, especially in the workplace. According to the Barna Group, in 1993, 89% of Christians who had shared their faith agreed that sharing their faith is the responsibility of every Christian. Today, less than 64% believes that same thing now, a 25-point drop. Only three in 10 Christians who have had a conversation about faith say evangelism is the local church responsibility, 29%. And we wonder why the world is becoming more and more corrupt, more and more secular. It is us Christians who are making the church irrelevant by not sharing the good news. We simply do not share. We simply do not believe that it's good enough to tell somebody else about. Check this out. I want you to see what the shepherds did as soon as the angels had gone back into heaven. Luke chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. I want you to notice that they said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see. They were all in agreement for the scripture stated that they said to one another. It was not just one zealot bullying everybody else to go. They were in total agreement that they should go. They did not argue or quarrel amongst themselves on what to do with the sheep, what should, should, should somebody say here, they all agreed we should go and see this thing. They felt that it was their God-given responsibility and their God-given right to do so, and they did. Now, I want you to notice what the shepherds did after they went and saw. Because latched right on there in the, is the second part of the Christmas mandate of go and tell. It is, if you look with me at Luke chapter 2, verse 17 through 18. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. So as soon as the shepherds had gone into Bethlehem and had seen and confirmed everything that the angels had told him, Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus lying in a manger, they made it known what had been told them. In other words, they went and told. They did not keep it to themselves. They shared the good news of the Savior's birth. It's the good news of Christmas. A Savior has been born. A Savior who is destined to save the whole world. Everyone, anyone who will come, he will be saved or she will be saved. They felt they had no other choice but to share this exceedingly good news because, my friends, it is exceedingly good news because once we were lost, but now we are found. We once was dead in our own sins, but now we are alive to Christ. They were not asked to go by the angels, but they were encouraged to go. They were encouraged to see for themselves. Don't just take the angel's word for it. Go and see for yourself. Go and experience Jesus for yourselves. Now you've seen and experienced. Now go and tell what you have seen. Go and tell what you have experienced. It is the Christmas mandate. Go see and go tell. Ah, but Brother Kenny... I like to mind my own business, you know. It just doesn't concern me. Besides, you know it's politically incorrect. Well, 
Forget about political correctness. Forget about not wanting to intrude. This is good news. These men, the shepherds, were minding their own business. When an angel appeared and God's glory began to light up the darkness, because God's glory always lights up darkness. And once you've experienced God's glory, you cannot help but share God's glory with others. According to a ChristianPost.com survey done by LifeWay Research, 80% of those who attend church one or more times a month believe they have a personal responsibility to share their faith. But 60% have not told another person about how to become a Christian. Although 80% believe it's their responsibility, 60% have not, or 61% have not told one soul. That's only 39% who has. Only 39% of Christians have shared their faith within the last six months. They know, but they do not tell. I know I should tell, but I ain't gonna tell. It's not my business anyway. That attitude has to stop. We have a Christmas mandate. Go see and experience. Now go and tell so somebody else can have a chance at life. See, according to Life, LifeWay's research project, they focused on measuring spiritual maturity in individuals and it revealed eight biblical attributes that were consistently evident in the lives of maturing believers. Of those eight, sharing Christ has the lowest average score amongst Protestant church attendees. The lowest. We just do not tell. It would appear that as Protestants, we will come and see, but we will not go and tell. Whatever we've seen, whatever we've heard, we keep it to ourselves. Can it be that we're not experiencing anything that we feel worthy of sharing? I don't know. I don't know what, what the problem is. But my friends, I'm telling you, this ought not be. Look at John chapter 1, verse 35 through 42. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they came and saw when he w where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it, it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and follow Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ, he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. If you note, or if you notice, John said to no one in particular, but to everyone, Look, I know for sure that he is the Lamb of God, the long-awaited Messiah. And he pointed his finger at Jesus as he walked by. And two of John's disciples um, heard him say this, and they began to follow Jesus. And Jesus noticed them following him, and he asked them, well, what do you want? What, what, what are you following me for? What are you seeking? And they asked him, where, where are you staying? And he replied, come and see. 
The scriptures then says that one of them, Andrew, went to tell his brother, Simon Peter, and he brought him to Jesus. In other words, he told Peter to come and see. Come and see for yourself, Peter. Come and see. Come and experience. Because come and see is a personal experience. If someone just tells you about an event or an experience, it is not your experience. It is their experience. But when you come and see, that is your experience. No one can deceive you. No one can put doubt in your mind. No one can con you. If it's your experience, it is your experience. Therefore, it is personal to you. We must make the the gospel personal. That means, or that does not mean that we come and see and that we just keep it all to ourselves. All the information that we get, all the experience that we get, everything, we just keep it to ourselves. That does not mean that. It means that we should share it with someone else. Because if we don't share it with someone else, how in the world will they find out about Jesus? We should go and tell. We share the good news of of Christmas with others. Look at what the Great Commission says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Jesus told his disciples to go and tell. The Great Commission can also be found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. It is of the utmost importance that we not only come and see so that we have a personal experience, but that we go and tell so that others can also come and see and have that same personal experience. And then they in turn can go and tell. Because after all, how then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. That is why our Christmas mandate is so important. Without without it, without this mandate, many would perish. But because of the Christmas mandate, they are now serving Jesus. They are now alive to Christ. They now have eternal life in him because someone went Someone saw, someone believed, someone experienced, and someone went and told. Someone told you about Jesus. Someone told me about Jesus. Someone told every Christian about Jesus. And that's why we believe today, because someone told us. What I mean is this. First, we come and see. We get that personal experience. Then we go and tell. And someone else has that personal experience. And they do the same. And then they do the same. And they do the same. A beautiful circle of salvation. And it's all for the glory of God. The angel said to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2 verse 12, And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Go on to Bethlehem and see so that you can have that personal experience with the Savior. After you have that personal experience, you will know what to do. You shouldn't have to be told what to do. When you have the Christmas experience, the experience of knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior, for he is Jesus, the Savior of the world. He is Christ, the Lord. So the question today is, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? He came to pay the penalty for your sins and for my sins. He came to Pay the penalty for your transgressions and for my transgressions. So 
Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? If it's not, it can be. All you have to do is to ask, and Jesus would freely give. Would you like to know Jesus this Christmas? Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I ask you to help me to live for you this Christmas. At this Christmas, I receive the Christmas gift of life, the Christmas gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I accept it now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What you need to do is to join a church and experience Jesus for yourself. Then go and tell so somebody else can experience Jesus for themselves. Find yourself a Bible. Highlight the promises. Commit those um, verses to memory so that you can recall them in hard times or in times of trouble or, or when you're being tempted. That's what Jesus did. He said, it is written. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate each and every one of you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, and the Lord bless you richly. Be blessed and stay blessed.